Hello everyone and welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Arbrecht at Really Robin Stamps and you are joining me today on September 30th, 2022 for episode 71 of Paper Crafting Playdate. So what we're going to do is basically play with paper and we're keeping it extremely simple today and we're going to use just stamps, paper, and ink, no pattern paper. I'm going to show you three different backgrounds, very basic, simple backgrounds that you can use to make cards for any season. So let's get started. So happy Friday if you are watching this today when this video goes live. And if you're watching on the replay after September 30th, I'm just so glad you're here. I appreciate you joining me and having some fun with stamps, ink, and paper today. So before I forget, because this is tomorrow, World Card Making Day is happening October 1st on Saturday. That's tomorrow. And it's going to be a really exciting virtual event that Stampin' Up! is hosting free um, for anybody who wants to join. So I'll put the link in the description box for registering for World Card Making Day because even if you can't watch it live tomorrow, if you register, then you are going to um, get a link that you can watch the replay of the event at your convenience. So that is a good deal. I will also post a PDF that has the project pieces for the three projects that they're going to be making together with everybody who joins in on World Card Making Day. And so you'll have the pieces to make those projects. Now the three stamp sets that are gonna be featured for World Card Making Day are these three right here. And um, so each one of the projects has one of these stamp sets to, that's gonna go with it. However, if you don't have those, don't worry, you're gonna be able to um, use the pieces that you cut to make some kind of project with whatever you have. So I think it's going to be really exciting. And this is the best part. Stampin' Up! has um, told us that they're doing something really special tomorrow on October 1st um, as a surprise and in coordination with World Card Making Day. So you definitely want to pay attention and join in. Uh, definitely register so you get notified of all that goodness, okay? So tomorrow, World Card Making Day, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope you um, join us. All right, we have a new hostess code. This is for October. Let me bring that down just a second. So this is the code for ordering in October. This is my code. So if you would like to order with me and your order um, uses this code, then you will get a free gift from me in the mail. So that is what I use my hostess rewards for is to purchase um, some extra goodies that I can send along to you. So I have a two tiered uh, reward system um, for October because we're kicking off a new Stampin' Up! year. So with a $50 order, you can choose um, the adhesive of your choice if you want liquid glue or Stampin' Dimensionals. And if your order is 75 or more, you can pick out a set of Stampin' Blends. So you can pick out any combo, any color that you want of Stampin' Blends and um, start you know, add to your collection of those markers. Okay, so I did a video um, last fall and it was one of my very favorite videos that I did because I, I found some clothing items that were very fall and I pulled out the color combinations from those clothes and I came up with some um, kind of unique fall color combinations and I found the cardstock that matched. And so I, I kind of focused all my projects just around using fall colors. And so I wanted to do something um, similar to that because that honestly was just one of my favorite videos. And it was very simple, um, simple stamping, just using colors. So I have a bunch of these. I just put these together. And these are just some of my 
favorite fall combos, but we are gonna focus on three specific fall color combinations today. And all my projects will feature these three combinations. So this one right here, I'm just calling classic fall. It has the pumpkin pie, the old olive, the um, cherry cobbler, and then the crushed curry. So it's just very classic fall colors. So that's gonna be one combination. And the second combination is um, a little bit more jewel tone. So we're keeping the pumpkin, but this time we're gonna add rich razzleberry, the garden green, which is a cool green, and then Cajun Christ. So these are kind of like jewel tone fall colors to me. And then we're gonna do kind of a unique, different kind of fall color combination when you use some of these more um, pastel colors with the pumpkin pie. So pumpkin pie is the constant in all of these color combinations. So I just look around, you know, around my world, I, I pay attention to things and that's kind of how I come up with color combinations and I try to find Stampin' Up colors that match. And this was the inspiration for this one here. This was a plate that I found that I um, got to decorate and use for the fall season. And so I loved these kind of light colors, especially that pastel. And so I picked balmy blue, but you could definitely change it up and put pool party in there and um, you know, keep it, keep it with whatever colors you like. But that was my inspiration for that one. Now, this one too, you could change out that pumpkin pie and you could put in kind of a, a, a pinky orange, the Calypso Coral, and then you've got another completely different kind of fall combination. So these are all flexible. All right, so let's bring out our first project. So we're, I'm gonna focus on backgrounds today. Um, I love to create backgrounds with my stamps. It's just one of my favorite things to do. And I thought it would be fun to make all the backgrounds with shimmery white cardstock. Usually I use um, basic white most of the time, um, only because shimmery white is a little bit more expensive per piece, right? So I kind of save it for special occasions. But what's really nice about shimmery white cardstock is it has a really um, semi-glossy, or uh, it's still matte, but it has a lot of um, smoothness to it. So it's really nice when you're blending backgrounds to use the shimmery white. You can also use it when you're watercoloring. It's great for that as well. So um, our backgrounds are going to, the bases are all gonna be shimmery white. And then I've also pulled in a lot of the cardstock vellum because this is a great, layering piece when you're just making a simple card. Both of these papers are on page 140 of the annual catalog, Shimmery White and the Vellum Cardstock. They're both on this page here. That's where you can find that paper. Okay, so let's get started and we're gonna go and head and use our first color combination, our classic fall. And so I have a quarter sheet of shimmery white and I have our four colors that we're going to use. So we'll put pumpkin pie and crushed curry over here and cherry cobbler and old olive over here. So we're going to use blending brushes with these colors to create a simple background. All right, and I have a brush for each one because these colors are kind of different. So this is one of my very favorite things to do ever. And it's the technique is simple, it's just called burnishing. And what you do is take your blending brush or finger dauber or your Stampin' Sponge, whatever you have, and you're going to just make color burnished into the cardstock in different areas. And you can do this in any shape, whatever you want these areas to be. So I'm gonna do like at least 
three areas of each. So there's the pumpkin. Now I'm gonna do crushed curry and I'm gonna overlap so that my colored sections are um, meeting. Let's do green. This is old olive. So burnishing is a term that means to make shiny or lustrous by rubbing. And so whether you're using the blending brush or you're using a sponge, you just kind of go lightly over an area in kind of a circular motion. And then as that color starts to get added to the paper, you can increase your pressure to make it darker. This is the cherry cobbler. So once you have all the areas filled in, you can kind of look at what you have and decide, do I need any of this to be a little bit darker? And so you can go back and burnish more as much as you want into it. I also call this technique um, very th therapeutic. I call it there's therapy, <laughs> burnishing therapy, because it's very satisfying to do and it's very relaxing to do. So if you have a whole sheet of paper, then that would be really fun um, to just do the whole thing and then you could divide it up however you want. So here we've got just this beautiful background and we're letting those colors speak fall, right? So now what I'm gonna do is just very simply stamp on top of my background. So we've burnished the color in and now we're going to take a stamp and just stamp all over it. So I'm gonna choose this big um, background image from Fond of Autumn and I'm gonna use black ink, but you could really use any color. I'm gonna ink it this way. It's a lot easier when your image is larger than the ink pad to kind of do the inking process upside down. You get a better chance of getting it even. So now I'm just going to cover the whole front, the whole background with this background stamp. And we'll do one more. Okay, I love that. Done. In my mind, this is perfect, right? I don't need to do anything else to it. It's delightful. All right, so we've made this background. Now, one of the fun things that you can do when you have a background is to add some splatters to it. So I'm gonna take my water brush, and this is already filled with water, and I'm using the large tip. And I'm just gonna get a lot of water into the bristles by squeezing the barrel. Just get it like it's about ready to drip. And then I'm just going to tap it, squeeze out a little bit more, and get some drops. Like that. 
going to let it sit for just a second. And what the water's going to do is pull up the ink. And so you're going to get these beautiful little water spots, basically, is what it is. Okay, so I, see, I love how that looks. I'm going to put a few more over here. They didn't quite get big enough. And then we'll blot. There we go. So that just adds a little bit of interest to your background. It makes people wonder, wow, what did you do? That looks complicated. And underneath all of that, you can just see this little bit of shimmer in the paper. It's really beautiful. All right, so let's finish this card. Now remember, the background is kind of the... Um, the focus of what I'm showing you today. So the focal points are gonna be really, really simple. And so I've taken this image again, I've stamped it on regular basic white cardstock. And then I'm gonna use the Stampin' Blends to color in. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'm just gonna do these flowers. So I did the dark pumpkin pie first and now I'm going right on top with the lighter like that and I'm going to go back with that dark pumpkin and just go right over the cherry cobbler that I just did, like that. Let me zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's make a yellow flower. So cr we don't have a crushed curry stamp and blend so I'm using daffodil delight but you'll see it really it all kind of coordinates really nicely together it's very close okay and then our smallest flower will make Cherry cobbler. So I'm picking out the colors that are in here with the Stampin' Blends. And then make this center yellow. And then I'll take the old olive for the leaves. That's the light old olive. And then I'm just going to highlight with the dark or shadow, I guess. and then go back with the light and blend it in. These are so easy to use um, if you haven't added any to your collection yet. Um, definitely think about it. And you can try a pair for free with your order in October, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so that's how I would color that using all of those wonderful coordinating blends. And then I will take the die and cut that out like that. So this die is going to cut this image into four pieces. So you'll get this one, this one, and then these two. Or you have a die that you can use if you want to keep this image solid, you can cut out the whole thing. 
that's really a great set um, of dies and I love the greetings in here um, it's really fun so I've already finished the card so I cut that out added a greeting And there you go. So that is the first way to make a background is to burnish the color, stamp on top of it, and then add water, add water splatter to make it interesting and then just pop on a focal point. Very easy. Okay, so let's just take a look at this color combination. with a different card. So this one's using the Cottage Rose stamp set, which maybe you wouldn't look at that stamp set and think that's, I could use that for a fall card. Absolutely can if you let the color kind of drive what you're doing by making this background. So there's the, the jewel tones. And then here is the kind of modern pastel fall look with the apple, the apple set. So this one, I used the cardstock vellum and just made a nice little layering piece on the top just to kind of mute that and give the little apples a place to land. But you can see the, the I did the greeting, or I did the background just the same way. All right, so that is our first background technique called burnishing and splattering. So let's move on and let's make a card with this jewel tone. So I'm gonna keep the pumpkin cause that's our constant. We'll keep that one. And let's bring out our jewel tone colors. Let's switch this over here. got Cajun Craze and Rich Razzleberry and Garden Green. Now, of course, you could keep Old Olive in this mix. In fact, I had it on there first. See, there's Old Olive. So either of those greens look a great with these colors, right? But I'm just doing a little bit more of a cool green just to kind of bring out more, like I said, the jewel tones. So our second background technique is actually my favorite. Well, I just said that about burnishing, didn't I? I guess I'm gonna uh, say, <laughs> they kind of go hand in hand. They're very similar. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this time I'm gonna use another stamp set that you wouldn't typically think would be fall, right? If you see this stamp set and you know that it's part of a suite of products from Stampin' Up, you know the paper has these gorgeous colors in it. It's definitely um, an amazing pack of paper, but sometimes when you are tied to the paper, you, you can't see the images in any other color, right? So we're not using any designer series paper. We're just going to use the images and we're going to use our colors to make them look like fall. So we're going to start with kind of our largest image. So I'm going to make a stamped background first and then we're going to burnish it. So it's really kind of the opposite of the first technique. And these are actually all kind of similar. So I'm going to just have to be really careful to leave space. So I'm going to start with this one. It's slightly bigger. And we'll make this flower be rich razzleberry. 
So with the first flower, I'm gonna stamp three, and I'm gonna make sure they're all going in different directions. And then with the second flower, let's see, let's do this one. We'll kind of tuck in between. And do three. And then with our third flower, we're gonna have to start going off the edges here. We're just gonna make it like that. Okay, and then we'll take the leaves in our garden green. Put the leaves in any spot where they're going to fit. Okay, that looks good. So this is our stamped background. I'm going to actually add some words to this. And I'll use the rich razzleberry. I'm just going to add with love in to where the little holes are, little spaces in between. Like that. All right, so we stamped first, now we're gonna burnish, and we're gonna do it a little bit lighter than I did on the last card. So we just wanna highlight right on top of the colors. And what this is gonna do is it just cut, it's going to pull all of the images together and you won't see that white background. You're going to see it as one complete background, if that makes sense. Again, I could do this all day long. It would bring me nothing but great joy. How about you? Do you guys like to, to stamp backgrounds like this? I feel like this is stamping in its purest form, just stamping images with ink and doing a little sponging. So let me put the ink pads away for right now. Actually, let's just move them off because I'm gonna bring them back in. Okay, so there's our background. Now, if this is kind of boring, that's okay. You can leave it as it is, or you can step it up. So I'll show you the stepped up thing that you can do. We're gonna use an embossing folder. Okay, so this is a 3D embossing folder. And this has just these beautiful flowers. So it's gonna just add a little bit of texture to this background and make it look nice. see the texture now. So you've just got a nice piece of paper to use. Your card doesn't need a whole lot more because the background is doing all the work. So we're gonna double layer this. So my card base is pumpkin, which that's, I love that. Just, just simple like that, but I'm gonna add a layer of the rich razzleberry because I really like rich razzleberry with pumpkin pie. And then we'll put that on pumpkin. OK, 
Okay. You can actually leave this as is. Like this is this is beautiful. <laughs> I think. Um, we're gonna make a simple little focal point. We're gonna use our vellum as a layering piece, and then we'll take one of the dies, this one right here. And a greeting like that. So vellum is kind of tricky because it's see-through, right? So you have to strategically attach it where you're gonna layer something else on top. I'm just gonna use liquid glue here and that's where this greeting piece is gonna go. Like that, and then we'll pop this up with dimensionals. Okay, what do you think about that technique? So this one, you burnish, then stamp. This one, you stamp, then burnish, then emboss. Now you could emboss this one too. They're very similar, but this one you're doing with colors of ink for your stamping. This one you're doing with like black or a solid color. So let's just take a look. So this was, this are jewel tones, but if we pull back this color combination here with the exact same card, do you see how it just changes the fall tone of those flowers? Now I bet you're not thinking necessarily that those um, aren't fall flowers anymore, right? They look like fall flowers to me. And then here they are once again with this color combination. So this one I used the wood grained embossing folder just to make it a little bit different. Okay, so there is kind of the opposite background idea. So much fun, so much fun. Now, you can make, uh, when you're burnishing, this is really goes along more with this um, pattern here. When you're burnishing, it doesn't have to be in circles. You could do stripes like this, right? And then you've got um, just a different look to that. And for this technique, you can stamp any kind of image and just lightly burnish over it um, to get your background. So there's lots of ways to make this different. These are not embossed. These are just plain. Okay. Let's bring our colors back. So this is the third. I guess I'm showing you four backgrounds. I said three. I'm actually showing you four. All right, this is the third easy background technique. I'm gonna bring back these colors. And it's gonna be using another embossing folder. So this technique uses that trimmed piece of shimmery white and you need an embossing folder. So this one is um, leaf fall and those leaves kind of go across in a little diagonal and you're going to add color to your embossing folder. So it's a, um, it's blending ink on your embossing folder. So I'm gonna take my blending brushes. Let's see. So you can do this two ways. You can put the color on the um, embossed side or you can put the color on the debossed side. I'm gonna put it 
on the debossed side where there's the indentations and more of the flat surface so that the background of my paper gets more color. So I'm going to do Let's start with our garden green. I'm just going to kind of do it in sections here. I'm going to do green here. And then Cajun craze. Just overlapping those colors. And then Rich Razzleberry. And Pumpkin Pie. All right, so the ink is on the debossed side. Let me move these ink pads. And we'll put our, get the, cut and emboss machine ready to go. So what we're gonna do is just add this paper here. and But before I do that, I'm going to spritz it with just a little mist of water using the Stampin' Spritz. And that'll just help that color. So I'm gonna put that in there, close the folder. Okay, you have to have a Kleenex or a paper towel ready just to grab the extra off of your embossing folder. Okay, so where that embossing comes up, it leaves a little bit of white and then it adds that beautiful color to the background. And since I did it, Kind of in um, quadrants, it looks a little bit like color blocking. So let's attach this to a card. Now it's not quite dry. You can see the parts where it is wet, but it will dry. We're going to put this on a Cajun Craze card base. And then I thought this was such a fun fall little set too that I made a little focal point using the elements in this bundle. Also layered it on a vellum stitched rectangle. And we're just going to kind of put that right about there. Again, I'm going to put the adhesive behind where I already have my other pieces mounted so that that adhesive won't show through the vellum. So once this dries here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put a little glue dot under um, under the vellum where these little mushroom stems are, and that'll help hold it down down here. It's a little bit wet right now, so it's okay. So that is using an embossing folder with blended ink in the embossing folder.
Okay, so check out our other color combination. Here is the classic fall. It's so interesting, isn't it, that background? And then here is the modern pastel one. They're all with the same embossing folder. But look at the different kind of feelings you get from those different color combinations. Just love it. Do you have a favorite? This one, this one is, is my favorite. Um, I'm really digging that white embossed pumpkin. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's see if this is wiggling here. Okay, let's put a glue dot underneath here to hold that down better. So the glue dot's gonna be hidden under the, the stem. There we go, perfect. Okay, so that is background technique number three, embossing folder, blended ink on an embossing folder. All right, last one, number four. Is a background technique using vellum. Let's just flip this over here so you can see. And for this one, we're gonna use this color combination. So let's pull out these ink pads. Balmy Blue, Pear Pizzazz, Pale Papaya, and Pumpkin Pie. So there's our pumpkin. Papaya and blue. And here's our green. All right, so what we're gonna do <clears throat> is a technique called blended alcohol. And <clears throat> I have a video all about this technique. And most of the time, or usually, this technique has been done with the blending, um, I just forgot what they're, oh, Stampin' Blends. And you, you color with the marker um, because they're an alcohol-based marker. You color on the cardstock vellum and then you use alcohol. I tried it with ink and it works really well with just ink too. So I'm gonna show you this version. So I'm gonna burnish the ink into the vellum. I'm gonna do the pale papaya first since it's really light. You don't have to um, make these touching and make them as beautiful because they're gonna get blended together with the alcohol. Okay, so there's our color. can see so there I've just put that ink right onto the vellum using the blending brush again if you have sponges or um, daubers that works too and then we're gonna take isopropyl alcohol this is 70 the 90 works even better if you've got 90 but this was the one I grabbed and it actually works terrifically. So you're gonna take your, um, I'm not using any water in here. There is water, but I didn't squeeze water into the tip. So I'm gonna take the alcohol and I'm gonna just dab spots. Where those colors are. And it's gonna take the ink and just kind of 
give it interesting edges. And because the rubbing alcohol, it dries fast, um, you get some interesting designs. So I'm gonna do the green next. Then I'm going to do the blue. I'm going to grab a little bit more. And we'll do the blue. So by the time you're done, you've got the rubbing alcohol everywhere. Okay, so you can just let this dry. It's already drying in spots. I'm gonna use the heat tool just to speed it up. I'm just gonna hold it down with this. I use the low setting um, just to try to help with the warping of the, the vellum. But once you glue this down, it stays flat. All right, so let's take this away here. So for this, you're gonna need a piece that's the exact same size of the shimmery white um, that's gonna go underneath, it's gonna brighten that background. Isn't that pretty? So you basically have two sides. This is the side I did the technique on and the edges are maybe just a little bit more visible um, and interesting. So you can decide which side you want facing up. So this one maybe is just a little bit more muted but both of them look fabulous. So you can kind of decide, maybe it's easier <laughs> to, to um, put the adhesive on and glue it down that way. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now for vellum, right, we talked about how you can see the adhesive through the vellum. But if you're using Stamp and Seal or Stamp and Seal Plus, you can kind of um, actually push the the adhesive, you can rub it in and it's not visible. So for this, um, as long as you're, you have the adhesive all the way around the outside, there. So now I'm gonna just really press where that adhesive is and it really, it disappears underneath. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. I love that. All right, so I already cut a frame. I took two of the stitched rectangles and I just nested them together on the balmy blue cardstock and made a little frame for just for something different. This would be another way you could kind of step up any of these backgrounds by putting a little frame around them.
And then our card base will be the pear pizzazz. That looks like my plate, doesn't it? Those colors, I really like that. All right, so just to finish this off, I used the uh, Fond of Autumn piece that had the acorns on it, and I colored it in those colors, and also one of the greetings that comes in that bundle. So all we have to do is put that together. right on top of that circle. Like that. Simple. What do you think about that blended alcohol technique? So much fun to know you can just use your regular inks with that and just some basic rubbing alcohol. So here's another one I did with the same colors and I used that pretty cottage wreath. No frame, so you can just kind of see how it looks very basic right on top of a card base. But here are the classic fall colors with just a greeting on there. Now, if you're gonna stamp on your vellum, you have to use stays on ink. The other inks won't dry, so you have to use the stays on ink. And then here is the jewel tone colors with that simple card. Oh my goodness. These backgrounds are so much fun. Do you have a favorite? Which ones have you tried? Let's bring them all back out and look at them and review what we did. So we've got our color combinations. Now I'm gonna make a PDF with my colors on there so you can download um, the PDF that'll just have these color combinations on it so you don't have to um, recreate it. You can just maybe, you can use the PDF or you could cut the PDF apart um, if you wanted to have your own little color swatches. So the first thing we did was, nope, this wasn't the first thing we did. The first thing we did, we just, we um, burnished color and then we stamped on top in black and then we splattered with water to get those interesting backgrounds. The second technique was stamping first with solid images, burnishing, the color, and then using an embossing folder. And then the third technique was blending color on an embossing folder. And then the fourth was blended alcohol on vellum. All right, are you seeing fall through my eyes right now with these beautiful colors? Lots of pumpkin pie, but I hope, um, I mean, the value that I want you to take away with is that you can take, you know, any stamp set, stamp set and colors, and you can make those colors kind of reflect what you're seeing outside or for whatever season. You can do all these same techniques with winter color combinations or spring color combinations or summer, whatever you pick is going to kind of reflect the season. And then you can use your stamps 
um, to just kind of highlight those beautiful backgrounds. So I hope this inspires you to um, just get out your colors and your stamps and do some very simple backgrounds um, and then pop on those focal points and you will have a ton of cards in your stash um, to use for this season. So thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, bye.